more of than the parents we have, our divine cosmic parents. They're very generous. We're made the image and likeness of these gods, and uh, they're, uh, they're not threatened by the idea that we call ourselves children of God, sons of God, daughters of God. The peacemakers, if you're on the side of peace, making peace on earth, having contentment and harmony and safety and security for everybody, freedom, uh, then you're God's friend automatically, default, and you're not going to lose your reward. No matter what little things you do to help others to see the light, you're not going to lose your reward. Whoever gives one of these little ones that loves me a drink of cold water will not lose a reward. So isn't it encouragement and comfort like that? Kind of like that drink of cold water it refreshes the soul. So we can all do that in our own little way. We can all reach out and be a friend of humanity. If you're a friend of humanity, you're automatically a friend of God's too. So it's a beautiful thing. And we're going to get goodness. We're going to get gladness of heart. And, you know, don't worry about riches and all that crap. That's secondary. You care about, you know, strengthening the weak links that are out there dying and snapping right and left right now. We've got a lot of big problems to think about that our own personal, you know, profligate, luxurious decadence, you know, that we could, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but we've got to work toward taking everybody with us to really enjoy it, to feel good. We want God's approval and he's not going to prove if we're just that strong link in this chain that's just snapping apart right in love. How anyone can become a brilliant innovator and successful problem solver. Here's the trick. Throughout your day, whenever you run into any little annoyance, anything that bugs you in any way, to any degree, simply ponder a solution. It's kind of like, you know, you, and, and also existing stuff. Like say, well, you, this thing exists, but, you know, it doesn't work quite the way I would, you know, I would make it work this way. So that's, you know, that's making a better mousetrap. And then, you know, you succeed. It's just like the adhesive bandage. It got the name Band-Aid, but that was just, they were the first ones on the scene. They dominated the market for a while, but not anymore, right? Because people go for the generics. If the generics are as good as the name brand, who gives a crap about name brand? It's like these idiot politicians. They're starting to figure out people don't give a crap if you call yourself Democrat or Republican. We'll know you by your fruits, you, you know what. And um, we know your fruits stink to high heaven. So give us generic any day. We're fine with generics. We just want progress. We want the problems fixed. We don't give a crap what you call yourselves. Like Shakespeare said, you know, a rose or a dog turd would smell the same under any other name. And I just made that up, but I think that's appropriate for what I'm trying to convey. Won't need name brands, but you can be, anybody can be a great innovator. It's just, you know, just even design. It's just like, wow. I mean... I've collected flashlights. I've got a collection of flashlights now. It's like, wow, I really like this one. I really like this one. I really like this one. You know, it's like, well, maybe I should just design my own damn flashlight that will blow all this competition out of the water. You see what I mean? You can do it. Anybody can do what they want to do in regards to inventing and innovating and designing. And it's just, uh, you know, using your God-given imagination to think of how this could work better improve on what's already there you see how they've improved bottle caps on vitamins right i mean that was a pretty good invention somebody came up with oh wow i don't have to twist it all the way off just pop the top and i'm in business but um you see you get my point i just want to encourage everybody to um to think you know really just use your mind because it's a lot of fun i get a kick out of stuff i'm working on a design right now for a particular power landscape garden tool and um, I don't care if somebody else already has a patent on a similar idea or not that's none of my business let them sue me they'll have to prove okay that I didn't come up with the idea as well and that my idea idea isn't at least 10 percent my design isn't at least 10 percent different from theirs. that's all the whole patent thing is a temporary anyhow it's only seven years anyhow and it should be it should be. I mean, maybe they shouldn't do patents at all because a lot of people, just to prevent competition, they just shelf stuff. They'll buy patents. It's just like these conglomerates. Recently, I heard in Power Tools, gardening Power Tools, uh, Poolin, Poolin Pro was starting to get really good. I know products were really working better than the Steels, better than the name brand, better than the Echoes and Husqvarna's and crap. So what happens? Husqvarna goes in and buys up Echo. I think it was Husqvarna, but, or not Echo, but they bought up Poolin, and now there's no more Poolin out there. You see, this is monopolizing. And then so they could control the prices because Poolin Pro was appreciable cheaper than the other products. 
they couldn't have high quality and lower prices competing with them. So you understand it's not free market supply and demand. We don't have it anywhere. And everybody takes advantage of that to their benefit. It's communistic. It's monopolistic. It's not capitalistic. It's not free market. It's certainly not supply and demand. <sighs> the most important ingredient in doing a, quote, good job in whatever that job may be is simply being honest. Yeah, I believe that. If you're just really honest and critical, self-critical of your own work, then you will um, you will agree that, hey, you know what? This isn't as good as it could be, so uh, I'm going to, um, you know, I'm going to make sure this meets my quality. It doesn't mean that somebody else isn't going to do an even better job, but it just means, you know, you're doing a job that you think is satisfactory, right? Because we're all under time constraints. I mean, we can't... I don't get to spend an entire lifetime in one person's yard, right? I mean, I have to be spread thin. I have to do stuff here, there, and the next place. I have to, that's the way it works. So, and everybody knows we're under time constraints. But a lot of just doing a good job is just be, by being critically, ruthlessly honest with ourselves. And uh, we'll be satisfied with the work we did that the few people can do it much better than us, at least. That people can say, oh, that person, they did a good job, you know. So they'll like it. They'll be pleased with the work you do. A sin tax by any other name is still nothing more than an arbitrary, capricious ploy to steal from others. That's right. You notice these people that will implement a sin tax, like the one they did on tobacco recently in California that really dramatically raised the price a smoker has to pay to smoke? It's very arbitrary and capricious. I mean, it would make a lot more sense if they taxed um, the aspartame to the hilt. I mean, you know, if you want, if that's your theory that it's going to dissuade people from using a product, and that is the whole pretext and context of this thing, right? Oh, it's a syntax. Let's make them stop. If they want it, that's an indulgence. Let's make it pay to us. And we've got no say. It's going in their pocket, out of my pocket. And it doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't have to help you cut back on smoking. I mean, if you don't accept their incentive as gospel, let's say, hey, just money goes in my pocket, out of yours. And that's supposed to make you quit, you see. You can't afford it anymore because now you got to pay it to me. I mean, you see how that smacks? It really, it, it, it creates animosity in my heart. You understand? And I don't appreciate that any more than you would appreciate somebody arbitrarily and capriciously coming along to you and saying, well, I think you drive in your car is arbitrary and capricious and I'm making you pay $50 a gallon for gas because I drive an electric vehicle. How would people like that? See? You could, you could imagine that, look at that any way you want, but arbitrary and capricious uh, uh, indulgences, sin taxes on people is wrong. It's evil. It's ungodly. It's unholy. And I object. I am certain of very few things, but one thing I am certain of is that humanity will only discover happiness... when once universal freedom is attained, completely, roundly attained. We've got to. True happiness is comprised, is composed of many different facets, elements, ingredients, components. Right? And uh, first and foremost, I would put on that list is to be free. And unless that freedom is extended to everybody else in your realm, your vicinity, your neighborhood, in our case, planet Earth, we will not be truly happy because God being the grantor, the benefactor, the giver of happiness has to dictate certain rules, truths about this game. And one of those is it's universal. You understand? That your freedom is contingent upon his freedom and her freedom and their freedom. So that means your happiness is contingent on the happiness 
and the level of freedom of others. It's all logical. It's all reasonable. It's not far out. I encourage everyone to discover how special it feels deep down inside when we make others feel special. I mean, I mean, you want to win somebody over, you know, make them feel special, okay? That's what I believe. I don't think it's through humiliation, taunting or teasing, deriding people necessarily. I mean, it might have its occasion. I think that humiliation can be powerful when it comes to, like, nationalism, like humiliating Mexico into doing more for their people. So this wall of, that's why I call Trump's wall a wall of humiliation. That's the best effect. They still should make it a solar wall that can tilt a dual purpose so that when we don't need a wall anymore, okay, because that day is coming, the healing of the nations. Read your Bible. then it would make perfect sense to make this a solar wall. Absolutely. I honestly believe that the radical left and the far right are much closer to finding agreement in political philosophy toward having a meeting of the minds than the indifferent, complacent left or right-leaning. Right, if you're just kind of like, come say, come saw, yeah... Um, I'm a lefty or, you know, I'm a righty, uh, but, uh, you know, I just really don't have any principles and uh, I don't feel strongly one way or another. But, you know, those that are passionate, if you know, if you really look at those that are passionate on the left and they're good people, a lot of them are good people. Alex Jones describes himself as leftist. I, I'm a leftist, but I'm also right there with the fiscal conservatives that believe in low taxes, okay? So what I'm trying to say is the only ones that should be able to get their cake and eat it too is we the people. So if we the left and right come together on one thing, and that is just, look, demanding progress, and that's not for some, that's for everybody, that we believe that, you know, prog the working class should get ahead, that they want to enter the middle class and so on, so on and so forth, and, it make, and accommodate that, make it easier, not harder, because my whole life they've just been making it harder. And it's very distasteful, and it's a real turnoff, man. The game's a real turnoff. So I really get the left. I really do. I support the left. I support liberal thinking. And I also support good conservatives, too. I like their philosophy. I like gentlemen. I like guys like Roger Stone. I like I like a lot of conservatives. I'm, I'm really a kind of a conservative, kind of a straight guy. I really am. Uh, I get it. I really, I really, I like church going people. Um, I like mild mannered, gentle people that are still, you know, really strong characters. And, uh, and I see that in conservatives a lot. And they're good, decent, upright, honest people filled with integrity and, and all those good things honor and uh, conscience and uh, value their souls. They value, have the right values, biblical values, Christian values, all that good stuff, humanitarian values. So I like both sides, I really do. Uh, but I can find stinkers on both sides too. But the division thing, remember, we gotta understand this big fat ploy um, that has been perpetrated upon us. And uh, you know, to extricate ourselves from these people's grasp, we've got to, um, we've got to just uh, put down our arms and just you know, start hugging on each other and say, you know what, let's get it, man. I mean, all the liberals really should rejoice at this Trump thing when he's getting rid of this tax credit as much as that sounds it might sound bad to a lot of conservatives i'd say oh well wait a minute what do you mean that how's that going to affect my the cost of my house the price for my house you know uh, and i'll explain that to them because it's less attractive do you understand uh, like i explained that jarvis act proposition 13 that i explained how that protects people it's kind of like an affirmative action kind of like a, an, a prerogative a special privilege to a few uh, to their benefit, but it doesn't help anybody else. It just hurts everybody else around them. You see, it causes disparity. It causes imbalance. It creates poverty, and it's a bad thing. I mean, you can't have this attitude where, hey, good for me. I'm sorry if it hurt you, and then call it capitalism. I mean, it's just not the way it works. That's not progress as defined by capitalism. 
While it is certainly possible to simultaneously be both righteous and yet also a sinner, I strongly contend it is impossible to be both righteous and deliberately wicked at the same time. Yeah, there's a big difference, I think, between being, uh, you know, a sinner and to fall at times, to be weak, and to be overtly evil, wicked. To say, I have no regard for conscience, and I revel in my, my sin, and, and I will purvey it, and I will do whatever um, I can to uh, promote what I uh, have abandoned conscience to. So there's a big difference. Uh, there's, I mean, there's just a lot of really good people on the earth that wouldn't do a lot of things for money. They have, they know their boundaries. They're not going to be pedophiles, okay? That are quite capable of policing themselves.